I swear one of these days I'm going to do an outtake reel of all the takes that it takes me to do a video. It's probably five to six, sometimes ten times before I get it right. That's because I film ten to fifteen minutes straight with no script and I got to get some momentum and I usually flub it up. This is a perfect example. This is probably about the tenth time I'm making this video. Now, actually, I'd posted it already. This is actually version two of my review of the Cold Steel Roach Belly Knife, but I misquoted the prices in my video like 20 times, so I have to redo it. I don't want that out there. I like my information to be tight and accurate as possible. Sometimes I'll clear it up in the description, but not today. I'm just going to reshoot the video. As painful as that may be sometimes, and here we are about midnight 30, and it's freaking painful, but I'm going to get through it. This is another review of a high value fixed blade knife by Nut and Fancy. It's a Roche Belly, and I will tell you right now, I absolutely love the knife. Primarily because it's so freaking cheap. About $10. Maybe $12, depending on your source for the blade. I initially, in version one of this review, said it was like $25. What I was looking at is my spreadsheet. And I bought two of them. So yeah, it was $25 for me. $12.50 a piece or something like that I paid. That's cheap. Very cheap. And guess what? I'm going to put this blade in the category of lightweight tactical fixed blades. Not EDC. Could you use this blade as an EDC knife? Oh, certainly. I have no doubt about it. But the curvature or the sweep of that blade just makes it ideally suited to draw cuts. has an extremely sharp point on it that could probably pierce through any number of layers of clothing, leather, and probably even up to Class 3A body armor. don't know if the bad guys are wearing body armor, but if they are, they probably ought to watch out for the roach belly because it'd probably go right through it. Not a knife vest, but just regular body armor. I'm talking about bad guys, by the way, and specifically in the Mideast. So anyways, the roach belly would excel at that. And while we're on the blade, it's made of 4116 Krupp stainless steel. I am still learning about this stainless steel. There's been a lot of internet bashing about it, people who just go off. But I really haven't found anybody that I respect their opinion to be truthful uh, talking about it. And for me to respect their opinion, I need to know that they have indeed used it and they can prove it to me. And then I'll listen to them what they have to say about 4116. But in the Roach Belly Knife, I'm going to use it and find out how good it is. And I have heard from a couple of my viewers good reports on it. Uh, maybe a, analogous to 420HC. Maybe not quite as good on the tempering. But 420HC is, of course, Buck's proprietary stainless steel. But I will tell you this. Out of the box, this knife is razor sharp. And for a defensive blade, which again, nothing fancy is categorizing it as, it's almost secondary what kind of stainless steel it is because it's going to be carried a lot, maybe used never, or used little because it's a defensive blade. Now, could we use it as we're carrying it for EDC tasks? You betcha. And in that case, where it's seen a lot of cutting day to day, then we might see the limitations of the 4116 Krupp. But I really can't speak to that in volumes yet. But I'm wary when people just automatically jump on board and start bashing steels. I just, I don't know. I just don't dig that unless there's some validity to it. There's a lot of hype out there and people just jump on the bandwagon sometimes. Now, you might be saying, oh gosh, here we go again. Nothing fancy reviewing a cold steel knife. He must be on the payroll. Dudes, I don't care about cold steel. I don't care about Benchmade, Spyderco. All these makers have, and when I say I don't care about them, I, I care about them, I care about the knives they make, but I'm not brand myopic. In other words, I don't just go for one brand of knife and then blast all the others like a lot of immature people do. I go where the utility, the value, and the performance is, and it just so happens that Cold Steel, with controversial President Lynn Thompson is producing blades like the Roach Belly at a price level that no one else is touching. Now, there's some other blades out there along the lines of the Roach Belly, maybe a Frost, but they really don't have the sweep and the belly and the sharp tip that this knife does. I just think it blows away all other 
lightweight polypropylene handle nice from what I've seen. That can change. Again, this is just a snapshot of my opinions when the video is made. It can totally change. But in the catalog of Cold Steel, it says that this was kind of a throwback to a 1800s design, something along those lines. They say it's like the black powder community has had a knife like this for years and they decided to recreate it. I'm um, not really sure what that means, don't really care. But here it is in the catalog. There's your specs, by the way. Four and a half inch blade overall, eight and a half inches, 2.5 millimeter. I'm going to talk about that width. And amazingly, 2.6 ounces in weight. That's incredible. And therein, not just the price, but the weight of the roach belly is such a phenomenal attribute, attribute because you can carry this knife and basically forget that it's on your person. I love that. And it's a fixed blade, which means it doesn't need to be deployed. It's going to be maybe a little bit quicker than a tactical folder, but 2.6 ounces. With a sheath, it's just 3.5 ounces, and that's lighter than most tactical folding knives, as I've talked about a lot. Amazingly lightweight. Back to the width, it is 2.5 millimeters, and I think that is primarily the reason the knife is so freaking light and fast in hand. That's a lightweight blade. Now you can be saying, some of you guys will see this go, well that, dude, that's a kitchen knife. Really? You think that's a kitchen knife? Sure could serve as such. I mean, cut tomatoes, potatoes up, whatever you got going. But would you say that about this knife? Spyderco Bill Moran. This is a tactical fixed blade designed for defensive purposes. Plain and simple. Notice the differences, or the similarities I should say, because they're very similar in design. I think they were completely designed differently. I don't think one looked at the other. They have nothing to do with each other. It's just coincidence that they have very similar blade shapes. Lots of sweep for a draw cut, both in the Bill Moran and in the Roach Belly. Amazing. This is in VG stainless, VG10 stainless steel, which is a superior stainless steel, if you ask me. And I got this one about for 49 bucks. I'll do a separate review on it. Excellent knife. But notice that the roach belly actually has more reach. Has a sharper tip too. Both excellent, but the roach belly is along these lines. And I show you this because there might be some viewers go, well, that's a kitchen knife. Oh, really? Bill Moran sure isn't. Ergonomic handle meant for slashing. So is the roach belly. The roach belly is a lightweight tactical design. There's a sheath for the Bill Moran. Excellent Kydex version. How's the sheath for the roach belly? Eh, kind of sucks. It's a utility sheath. It's a pouch sheath. But for a $10 knife, crying out loud, what do you expect? And for a $10 knife, it's actually pretty outstanding. Lightweight Cordura. Heavy stitched, riveted. Not bad, actually. It has a welt inside, so the blade never contacts the riveting, the steel, or the stitching. Locks the blade in nice and tight with friction. No hokey designs here. Just simple. And it works. Now, let's get back to the blade. has jimping on the top right here. It does lock your thumb in. It's actually fairly functional. No thumb ramp and just kind of has an indentation in the choil area. Nothing special. How's the handle? Polypropylene and it's slick. It's got some fake wood grain patterning in there. It does nothing for grip. Ergonomic handle, I would like it to be a little bit longer, but it locks in the hand nicely. And again, there's some similarities there between this one and the Bill Moran. Again, it's a very ergonomic handle designed to fit in the palm, like so. Not overly long. Very similar, these two knives, in purpose and form. Again, lightweight tactical fixed blade. Very fast in hand. By the way, I think a lot of defensive blades go way overboard in terms of thickness, and I don't dig that. It makes it much slower in hand. Blade Tech did that with its ProTech Magnum or whatever that one was called. It did a review on it. Very thick blade, just too thick. Uh, granted, that's meant for hunting as well, maybe chopping bones, so maybe that's why they made it so thick. But for a defensive blade, I think this would be fine. So the handle's a little bit slick. Could you do anything to correct that, make that a little bit, I don't know, grippier? Well, what I thought about is maybe wrapping it with some hockey tape or you know, hockey stick tape. It's that black athletic cloth. I could wrap it and I've done it with various items over the years. But the problem is it's a friction held sheet so every time you push it in it's going to roll that tape off the handle. 
no matter how well you put it on. You could probably start rolling it halfway up since it, that portion remains out of the sheath. That's doable. Maybe cover it in a, maybe a higher quality material. Brooks A-Grip would be an example. That's very expensive. Way overpriced in my opinion, but it's excellent material. It's like a synthetic suede and you could like grasp it. Speaking of grasping it, this is going to be a disadvantage of the roach belly. I'll put it in the description. Both the slick handle, I've already talked about that. It is slick. Kind of has to be that way with a friction sheath though, I guess. And then also, not much sticks out of the sheath. For tactical use, that's not great because as we grasp the knife, it, we're going to have to switch our grip and re-choke up to do it. Now, a user in version one of this video said, hey dude, you could just use your pinky and draw it out that way and then you're ready to go. I think that's an excellent idea. That would take training just like a lot of things, but maybe you could solve it by doing that. Just like so. Good idea, dude. I wish I remembered your name. Sorry, I forgot. Anywho, nice sheath. No quick attach capability on the sheath, by the way, but you put some Ranger rubber bands from Brigade Quartermaster or ActionGear.com. Um, you can just attach it in all kinds of clever ways. Now, in my review of the screen review, Anatomy of Hype, the Tom Brown Tracker knife, which I totally stand by, I lambasted them for the horizontal carry of a knife, but if you get something this lightweight, this small, this might, if you feel that you need to carry horizontally, the Roach Belly might be a good candidate for that because it is so short in overall length. I still don't recommend it. I much prefer vertical carry. Reference my Cold Steel Long Hunter, I think that's the name of it, video, and I told you a way you can actually snip a little cut in your pants and carry this inside your waistband and this comes out through that slip and then you put a belt through it to lock in the blade. I think it would work with a roach belly as well. Three and a half ounces that carry weight and just as deadly if not more deadly than the Bill Moran, another purpose-built defensive CQB knife. That's the roach belly. A lot to love about it. By the way, it's a hologram blade. You can detect that by just drawing your fingers across of course, going away from the edge so you don't cut yourself, but you can feel that it is indeed hollow ground. By the way, I love the finish on that blade. See how shiny it is? I think that's an advantage when you have a civilian defensive blade. If we bring it out, I'd much rather have the bad guy see the glint of steel and go booking away in terror than me ever having to use the knife or the gun or whatever defensive item I'm using that day. It's much better to have him run away in a civilian encounter. Now, if you're a soldier using a roach belly, uh, you come across a bad guy, generally you want to take him out. If you don't, he's going to just poke his, either capture him, I'm not just saying kill him, but capture or disable or maybe kill if you have to. Otherwise, you're going to have an RPG coming at you out that window. Later on in the day, maybe an RPK or an AK-47. That's a soldier environment. For a civilian environment, it's much better that we defuse a situation however we possibly can. So what's to like about the Roach Belly? A lot. Super lightweight, super affordable, good, not great sheath, ergonomic, albeit slick handle. The Roach Belly, you should seriously add this to your collection just and start carrying it. I think you'll really dig it. Look at that tip, how sharp that is. I have two of these. They're so cheap, everyone should. That's Nut and Fancy's review. Thanks so much for tuning in, for the good ratings, for the support. I need it. I appreciate it. Whew, I'm tired. Take 11, Nut and Fancy.